All right, so hopefully everybody was able to get those cards sorted and think through a little bit where you think those evolutionary changes might go on your timeline and thinking about how long they may have taken in our evolutionary history for some of those changes to take place. What we're going to move into now is looking at uh, a few specific organisms that are related and start to think about some of the changes that took place in order for uh, different species to evolve and branch off of one of each of one another in that evolutionary tree. So the animals we're going to be looking at are going to be the Eleomeryx, the giraffe, um, and then we're also going to be looking at the Acanostega, which is a tricky one to say. So I'm going to ask that before we jump into talking about the simulation that you go ahead and write out this T-chart. We've been making a lot of T-charts lately, I know, but it's a really great way for us to organize our thinking and it's really gonna help you as you are taking some notes today because what we're gonna be doing is comparing some of the structures of these different uh, species to try and figure out which ones are most closely related and kind of where did some changes take place. Um, we're gonna be looking for similarities, we're gonna be looking for differences. So this is gonna give you a good setup for organizing your notes. Um, before we jump into the simulation, uh, I just want to remind you that I'm gonna walk through three different options you have. You've got the option that if you've got the simulation at home, there's going to be uh, some blue slides here in a bit. And you're going to want to open up lesson 2.4, open up the simulation that's in activity four in uh, the Amplify platform. And then you're gonna wanna click on the vertebrates icon. So please go ahead and think to yourself right now, which of the options are you going to get the most learning from? That first option that I already started to talk about is if you have access to Amplify at home, you're gonna to wanna to try and complete this by yourself. If you don't have access to Amplify at home, the other two options that I'm going to give you is, um, I've actually taken some screenshots of the simulation. So if you're somebody who doesn't have that simulation at home, but you're still wanting to push yourself and you're still wanting to read through some of the content independently, there'll be a few slides for you to go ahead and read through and start to make your own notes independently. And then that final third option, if you want to get a little bit some more support, see what that simulation might look like, you can watch the video and we will work through uh, reading some of it together. I'm not gonna be taking notes because that's gonna be your responsibility to be thinking about uh, even in that section where we work together, but I will be walking you through it a little bit more. So just as a reminder, go ahead and think which of those three options is gonna work best for you. You're gonna notice that for if you do have access to the simulation, this is gonna be where you're going to uh, want to take some time and pause the video and go through as you are um, working through the simulation for yourself independently. Um, just remember when you open up that simulation, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have clicked on the vertebrates icon and then you're going to be zooming in until you see a page that has a giraffe on it. Um, so going to go ahead and just quickly click through these blue slides. If you are somebody that's pushing yourself and going ahead and doing this simulation at home, that's awesome. Just use this first slide here. Our real, our, our goal here is to really, we're gonna be zooming in on the giraffe and thinking about which of these descendant species um, are most similar to each other. So you're gonna to wanna to read some of the descriptions and then look at some of the structures, of course, because we do know that structural similarities help us to understand the relationship between those two different species. So, if you're going to do that independently, I put this up just as a reminder, get this jotted down and then go ahead and open up the sim. There's gonna be a final thing that you're gonna to wanna to think through. So if you're doing the simulation independently, pause the video here. This is gonna be your wrap up after you've completed the sim and taken some notes in that T-chart. 
there's just two questions um, and then you can skip to the end of this video for a reflection. Uh, for the rest of us, we're going to go ahead and get started in the simulation. The second option is if you do want to read through some of these things independently, the green slides are going to help you do that. So the same thing as those blue slides that I just talked through, you want to make sure you've got your T-chart ready to go, um, all drawn out, and then I'm going to slowly click through these slides. So you can pause, spend a little bit of time. You're going to have the opportunity to read not only um, about some detailed information about the two species, but you're also going to be able to see some of those structural differences. So pause as you need to and go ahead and stay strong working through this independently. And just like those people that are working on the sim at home, at the very last few uh, seconds of this video, there is a reflection that you're going to want to complete as well. All right, so now for those of us who have no access to the simulation and you want to work through uh, some of those pieces um, by following along in the video, uh, now is your opportunity. We're going to work through um, in these red slides. So if you are someone who is on one of those other ones and you happen to stop on this slide, you're going to want to fast forward through the video just a little bit further so that you can get to uh, a slide that says uh, wrap up reflection. So as we go through this, I really want to stress, you should already have that T-chart written out on your piece of paper. Um, and then you're going to be responsible for taking notes. I'm not going to be putting down the notes in here. So what you're going to want to think about is what structures are similar? What are you noticing um, these two species have in common? And then what are some of those key differences as well? So let's go ahead and pause now if you need to take one more second. I'm giving you lots of warnings, so hopefully you've got it written out. But if you don't, this is your last chance to pause, get your T-chart set up to take some notes before we hop into the simulation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of my slides. I'm going to go into my Amplify platform, which may look a little bit different from yours at home. I'm going to open up evolutionary history, open up the vertebrates, and then I'm going to go into the tree where I'm going to zoom into the artiodactyls, which is not the same as a pterodactyl, um, even though it has that similar sounding end there. We're going to be talking about giraffes. Um, and then we're going to be talking about comparing the giraffe to two other species. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the two species cards that we're going to start with for our comparison. Um, the first one is going to be the giraffe, which is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. We're going to notice that that pops up into our screen right here. Um, and then the second animal that I am going to be comparing is the acanthostega, which it's really helpful if you're like me and struggle with the pronunciations. You're actually going to see those right here on your screen in the parentheses. So those might help you out. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm just going to be reading through and I'm going to try and zoom in to make these a little bit bigger so we can see it better. Um, I'm going to be reading through the information on these two species, what you're going to want to make sure you have ready is that T-chart so that you can start to list out some similarities and differences that you're hearing so that we can figure out which of these species um, are going to be most closely related to our giraffe. So let's go ahead and get started. It says, giraffes are the tallest land animals alive today. 
The largest giraffes are up to six meters tall, almost as tall as a two-story building. I hope some of you have gotten to see giraffes at the zoo. They're really, really cool animals. I love giraffes. All giraffes belong to a larger group called ruminants, animals that can process plants for food in special stomachs with four chambers. Deer, cattle, yaks, and antelope are also ruminants. Giraffes and other ruminants are all included in an even larger group of hoofed animals called artiodactyls. The acanthostega was a fish type of vertebrae that lived around 360 million years ago. These creatures were aquatic, lived in the water, and had gills. However, instead of fins, this is really cool, I think, they had small limbs with toes at the end. Scientists think that the acanthostega were some of the very first creatures to actually have limbs. Their limbs were very small and probably not strong enough to support much weight, especially out of the water. This means that although they had limbs, these creatures were probably not able to walk on land. So, here you can kind of start to see you might want to take some time and even pause the video here because um, we're not going to go through every single thing that is uh, everything every single structure I should say that is on here but what you're going to want to do is be looking for some similarities and differences between these two different species and taking some notes on those. So there's five different body parts that you might want to uh, consider as you're taking notes. You don't necessarily have to write about all five, but I would choose at least a few to talk about before we move on and start to compare the giraffe to our second species. So go ahead, take a second, pause the video right now, and compare some of those structures that you're seeing between these two species. Okay, so hopefully you got a chance to go ahead and make some comparisons between these two. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close out the box for the acanthostega because we're going to be done with that one for now. And then the second uh, specific organism we're going to be looking at is the elio, uh, elomerix, which again, if you're having trouble pronouncing it, use those pronunciations because these are some pr pretty tricky names and it's okay to struggle through them, just make sure you're using that support. So let's go ahead and read through and compare these two. Uh, we've already read the giraffe and it has not changed. So let's go ahead and read through our Eliomerix. The Eliomerix were grazing animals that lived on land about 25 million years ago. Fossils of Eliomerix have been found in, in Europe. North America, Asia, and Africa. These animals grew to be two meters long and had lived in many different environments. Some may have lived in forests, while others have lived in shallow water, the way hippos do today. Elomerics are part of a larger group called ruminants, animals that can process plants for food in special stomachs with four chambers. Deer, cattle, yaks, and antelope are also ruminants. So I'm going to go up here and click on this structure. So that was some of the detailed information. Um, and I forgot to click on this on the last one, but it is kind of cool. Um, if you want to click and see the appearance, there is what our Eliomerics looked like. And I'll go ahead and show you the Acanthostega since we didn't uh, look at that in the last one. Um, but hopefully you're probably uh, aware of what a giraffe looks like, but it's cool to see what those uh, different species that might not even be on the planet anymore, what they might have looked like when they were around uh, previously. So what I'm gonna have you do now is, again, you're gonna wanna pause the video here. This is a great opportunity for you to look for similarities and differences between these two species um, and take a look at their specific structures. Again, just like, um, we did earlier, you've got five different structures to compare. So pause the video, take some time now to go ahead and compare those and add some more of your notes to your T-chart. 
So hopefully now we've jumped back into our slideshow here and hopefully you have gotten a chance and your T-chart should be filled out with some of those specific notes that you took. If it's not, you're gonna to wanna to go back, uh, rewind the video a little bit and spend a little bit more time reading that. Or you can go back to the green slides where there's more information on uh, the two species that you've gotta be comparing to a giraffe. Uh, but we are almost done with the lesson for today. So I wanna move on for those of you who have been diligently taking notes and following along as we go. These are the two kind of wrap up questions that you want to answer to, uh, finish up today. And then on our last slide here, we're going to have a reflection. So I'm going to sign off for now and let you take some time to go ahead and complete these questions. Um, these are our two kind of final questions for the simulation. And then there will be a reflection for the whole lesson. So we'll look forward to seeing you next time when we jump into lesson 2.5. Take care and finish this lesson strong on the next two slides without me.